In this lesson, we're going to do final touch-ups to our condensation and then start creating the ice chunk for the bottle. Okay, so we're going to go into our material editor. And we're going to create another arc and design material for this. So under mental ray, arc and design. Let's double click on this and name this condensation. And we'll probably use this material for the ice as well. What we're going to do is increase, change our color to uh, black and our diffuse level uh, 200 should be fine and change our reflectivity all the way up actually we're going to change our diffuse to nothing and our transparency all the way up and what this will do is give us almost a, a glass shader but from a distance this will work just fine for the water okay so to add the material to the bottle or to the condensation it's not a matter of drag and drop. We actually need to assign the material within the particle node itself. So we can just go over to our viewport here and hit 6 to open up our particle view. And from here we need to make a material. So we have three different options, dynamic, frequency, and static. Well, we're not going to want our material to change during the particle age, so we're just going to use particle static. We can just drag and drop that and put it in between shape and display. So with material static selected, we can actually move it over to the side and from here we can actually assign the material get some room here hit instance so that we can change it over in our material editor okay I'm going to switch to our camera view and we'll give this a test render okay so it looks like our material didn't take and that's actually because our material is put in the wrong spot on our particle view. I just want to show you that uh, that can happen if the nodes are not put in the right spot. So we actually want to put the material static in between birth and position. And this will now assign the material to the object. You can hit render. Okay, now that it's rendered, you can see the condensation is now on the bottle. It's working really well up here in the front, but on the objects here on the side, they get the, uh, the glow on the side. Uh, it's not working very great there, but that's not going to be a problem because we're actually going to render them off in a separate pass where they're going to have a reflection. And we'll just be painting out the sides and leaving the ones on the inside proper so that they get the amber reflection. So that's going to work for now. We can close this up. And we can start working on the ice that we're going to make for the side of the bottle. So we can go into our Create tab, switch back to Standards, and choose Sphere. And we'll actually do this from the one of the side views or front views. I'm just going to drag a sphere out here. And actually, for this, I'm going to create a, a different kind of sphere. I find this one really helps the geometry to form better. So we'll create a cube. And uh, we'll just make sure that it's perfectly square. So I'm just going to copy both our length, our width, so that they're all even. And I'll set our lengths and steps all to three. Okay. From here, I'm actually going to put on a modifier called Sphere. Or Spherify. And that will actually make our object not have hard edges on the side. Or actually, poles, sorry, so that all the lines are actually a nice flow around the object. This will keep from any pinches and a lot of detail in one area and not in the other. Okay, so from here I'm going to put on an FFD deformer and we'll put on the noise as well like we did for the condensation. And I know in advance that I'm going to want to smooth this out as well. And I might even add another noise after that. Okay, so from here I can start playing around with their settings and I'll work my way up. So I'm going to play with the control points. So I know I'm going to want it something like this, rotated on the side, kind of hanging over the edge. Okay, and we can actually move this up into the scene, right onto the bottle, and start playing from it from here. This allows us to get a little bit more control. So I'm just going to play around with this until I find something I'm looking for.
Okay, we also want to make sure we do this from another view. Okay, pull this out so that it conforms to the bottle. We'll move that into position. And if you want, you can check that in your other views just to see if it's working. Switch our perspective view. Just have a look at how the ice looks. Looks like we should probably put that more on the bottle. Okay, so from here we're going to add in some noise. And like I said, if we lower the scale, the more jitteriness we're going to get. We'll up X, Y, and Z. And we can play with the scale or up those intensities. Okay, so you're not really getting the all the jittery look just yet. That's because we want we don't have enough topology to really help this break apart. So in my next mesh smooth, I'm actually going to up my iterations to two. So now we actually have a lot of geometry to work with. We can go up to noise now. And from here, this will be the the more detail that we're going to add. So we'll really lower this down. We can start playing around with a lot of this. to zero and up them small increments at this level. Alright. I'm wondering if our iterations are just a bit too high for this. I want to get more of a sharp look to this. And uh, we'll increase our X a little bit. Okay. And maybe a little bit more on the Y. Okay, and you can take this a step further if you want and even add more noise to this by adding another mesh smooth followed by another noise modifier. And the higher up you go, the more detail you're going to get. But I think this is going to work for me. So I'm going to apply the same material to this. So I'll open up my material editor. Oh. And we're going to put the condensation material on this as well. Okay, we can go to our top view here and just make sure that this is aligned properly to the camera. As you can see, it's not. We actually want it on the side here. So rotate that 90 degrees and position it. If we have to, we can go to our perspective view. Just make sure that's in the right spot. All right. If you want, you can just play around with that until you find something a little bit natural looking. Just scale it down. Come back to our camera view, and from here we'll do another render. Okay, great. Okay, so here you can see um, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not uh, this is getting the proper refraction that we want as the light's uh, pretty intense behind that. But like I said, we'll be doing another pass on this where we won't be having the, the yellow light behind it and we'll get the proper reflections on that. Okay, so with that render, in the next tutorial we're going to go through and just do all the fine tuning such as uh, changing our particles into geometry and uh, just kind of fine tuning the placement of those. And then we're going to set up our render passes so that we can get uh, the proper lighting for our particles and then we'll composite them over in Photoshop.